Over here. There you are. I've been waiting for you. I had almost started to worry that you had gotten lost. I see that you're wearing the spare cloak that I found for you, which will help with the little problem of your rounded ears, and you found the backpack that I packed for you. Master Rusi has already filled me in on today's expedition, so are you ready to go? Great, then let's go pick up a few supplies at the market and we'll hit the road. Did you have any trouble finding me? Yeah, sorry about that. I was so excited to head back out to the ruins that I ran off this morning to get ready without even thinking, and Master Rusi hardly leaves the lab these days. Well, he feels that he's pretty close to discovering how exactly to unlock the inner chamber of the Verdonwood ruins, something nobody's ever done. In almost a thousand years, anyway. Well, the problem with the human ruins is that most, if not all of them, are sealed via complex magic and archaic locks, so getting inside is a feat in and of itself. It took us months of research to figure out how to open even the entry doors, and they were barely holding onto their hinges anymore. Well, he's nailed down most of the arcane structure of the ward holding the door shut, and we're pretty sure we found blueprints that describe the type of mechanisms that reinforce the door, but he's been unable to isolate what he calls the catalyst, the final element which will complete the potion he's been working on to dispel the ward, the final ingredient to bring it all together. Oh, I have no idea what it could be. In truth, alchemy's never been my strong suit. And Master Rusi has always been more than content to handle all of the alchemical aspects of our work himself. The guy is kind of a perfectionist, if you hadn't noticed. <laughs> By the way, what did you think of Master Rusia? I hope he wasn't too harsh on you. He really means well, but he's got a pretty chilly outer exterior. <laughs> Get it? Ch chilly. You know, because he... Because he's a winter elf? It's not important. I anyway, what did you think? <laughs> you thought he was going to whip out his scalpel and experiment on you? Sure, he's an archaeologist and a scientist and all that, but he's still an elven being. He wouldn't do something like that. Now, probe into your mind or draw some blood, check your pain thresholds. Now that he would do. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No. If anything, he'd take a sample of your hair or some saliva or something if he thought it'd be useful for any reason. No live autopsies or mind playing of any kind, I promise. So, are you excited? To go back to the Verdonwood ruins, of course. Back out into the wilds where it all began. Isn't that exciting? A little nervous, huh? Well, that's understandable. But hey, think of it this way. If we hope to find anything out about how you got here, then the Verdonwood ruins would be the place, right? Hey, want to know a secret? I don't like the dark. What? No, I didn't say I was afraid of the dark. I just don't like it. What? Okay, okay, I'm kind of afraid of the dark, okay? Now stop giving me that look. As I was saying, I'm a little afraid of the dark, which can be kind of a problem when you're delving into dark ancient ruins. Right? Well, I used to be terrified of the ruins. They can be very dangerous after all. And to be honest, after my first time inside of a human ruin way back when I was a child, I never wanted to step foot back inside of one ever again. So how do I handle my fear then? Well, I pretend not to be afraid. Hey, don't laugh, I'm serious. 
I pretend not to be afraid of the dark. I pretend to be afraid of literally anything else other than the dark, and eventually, I stop thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So, if you're afraid to go back out into the wild, or to go into the ruins, then just pretend that you're not. Believe that you're not afraid, and eventually, you just might not be. Or at least you might not think about it so much. It's kind of like casting magic. Even if you know how to cast, like, uh, fireball. If you attempt to cast it, but you don't actually believe that you will, then you won't. Nothing will happen. But if you believe that it will, if you believe that you can do it, then magic happens. Anyway, that's just how I see it. Oh, we're getting close to the market now. Let's see, we'll need some rations, a canteen for you, some new rope, an extra pair of pythons just in case, and some spell tags just to be safe. I'm betting you also haven't had breakfast yet, so let's stop by somewhere to get some before we head out into the wilds, okay? Hmm? A catalyst? Oh yeah, Master Rusi had said something about getting you a fake one to hide the fact that you're a... <coughs> well, you know. Anyway, Master Rusi has said that he was arranging to have one made for you. Instead of satyrite, it'll be made out of glass with an opal core to give it the impression that it's glowing. Once we find out what type of magic you want to specialize in, we can just open it back up and replace the opal with another precious gem of the corresponding color, too. To the trained eye, the ruse will be kind of obvious, but to anyone else, the fake should do the trick. I don't really know, but as soon as it's ready, I'm sure he'll tell us. For now, let's just play it safe and remember. Always keep the hood of your cloak up while we're in the city. Never let anyone see your ears. We have no idea what will happen if word gets out that there is a living, breathing human walking around unchecked, especially since you're not allied with any nation. Hey, there's no need to look so worried, though. Everything will be fine, I promise. I've got your back after all. I won't let anything happen to you, I swear. Now come on, I can already smell the delightful scent of the fresh honeyed cream buns of Rayla's Bakery. Let me treat you to a nice Alsean style breakfast. Then we'll grab some supplies and hit the road. We finally made it, and it's still only mid-afternoon. Oh, I'd say we made pretty good time thanks to how often I've hiked this trail. I hope I didn't move too fast for you. I know you probably- What? Hey, are you okay? God, you look like you're ready to just lay down and die. Here, take a drink from your canteen. Jeez. If you're having such a hard time, then you should have said something. Here, let's sit on this fallen pillar really quick and rest before we head inside the ruins, okay? <sighs> Feeling better now? Good. Don't scare me like that again, okay? What would have happened if you had fainted? What if you had been stricken with heat stroke out here? It's an entire half a day's walk from the city to these ruins, and there aren't exactly healers out here. <sighs> Alright. Enough of the nagging. Are you feeling well enough to enter the ruins now? Alright. Then pull your pack back on and let's get to it.
Careful with your footing. The ground's not the most level here, and there's debris everywhere. Oh yeah, I've been down here many times, so I know everything to look out for. It looks like it's starting to get dark down here, by the way, too. Oh, that's alright. We didn't bring any torches because we don't need any torches. I know light magic, remember? First level spell. Fairy lights times two. There we go. See? One for me. And one for you. As long as I will it, these balls of light will float next to us, illuminating our way. You can even grab them and stick them to things if you want. Pretty handy, huh? Yeah, having light magic definitely does make exploring dark ruins a lot easier. Hmm? Oh, we're coming up on what used to be the main foyer of this building now. From there, we'll have to decide which of the four halls to take that branch off from the main room. What did this place used to be? Well, we think it used to be a research center of some kind back in its heyday. You know, a nexus for scientific and arcane pursuits. We found quite a lot of ancient glassware, the kind generally used in alchemy as well as a lot of archaic science equipment. There's even an ancient type of library here called an archivum that contains a lot of text centered around alchemy and arcane studies. It looks like the research notes, although we're not exactly sure since deciphering even a single one can take months. Well, the humans had their own language called Iru, which, and I don't know if you have anything like this in your world, unfortunately, nobody speaks anymore, making it what's called a dead language. So, that already makes things difficult, but it appears that in the last decade or so before their disappearance, they began encrypting all of their texts, meaning that not only do we have to find a way to decipher their texts, now we have to find a way to decrypt them too. Why did they start encrypting things? Honestly, we don't really know yet. The obvious answer is that they wanted to keep the things that they were writing, or recording at the time, a secret. But as to the reason why, we have no idea. Like I said when we first met, in the final decade or so before the disappearance of the humans, they started making some pretty odd decisions, given the fact that their empire was in a bit of a golden age. They pulled back all their armies, canceled the construction of new settlements, closed their borders, began fortifying their capital, and started encrypting everything they wrote. Not day-to-day -day stuff, obviously, like shopping lists or the like, only the important stuff, like official documents and historic records. They even began upending their architectural style to focus on building down and into the earth instead of up like they were used to doing. There's even evidence that states they completely abandoned the building of important cultural structures like statues and altars mid-construction. We call this period the Great Panic. No, no, things weren't bad. On the contrary, their civilization was thriving. That's what makes it so weird. Oh, we're here. Careful, the steps kind of slope a bit. Let's see. Archivum, archivum, that one. All right, follow me. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, right, so the human empire was thriving. Their economy was booming, their historical records don't list any form of famine or plague that they were dealing with. They had a sudden explosion in medical and alchemical sciences. Trade in and out of their empire was flourishing at the time, so they certainly weren't short on any goods or services. And they were right on the verge of conquering the whole of the Orkin territories, something not a single race besides the High Elves of old have ever even attempted. I mean, gods, their empire spanned nearly two-thirds of the Mistran continent before they suddenly stopped and pulled all their troops back to Aya, which I know may not mean a lot to you, but if I showed you a globe, you'd be amazed, I promise. Anyway, all of a sudden they pulled all of their troops home and abandoned all of their conquests. Even the new settlements that they were building at the time were suddenly just left abandoned. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting that you're from another world and all. Aya was the homeland of the humans. Oh, wait. Yep, here we are. 
Why the goal of today's expedition, that's where. The Archiva. Well, Master Rusi has a theory that states you were brought here due to some form of spatial disturbance caused by an ancient human teleport stone. Ah, a fine observation indeed. There are no teleport stones in these ruins. At least, none that we've been able to find yet anyway. So, Master Rusia has tasked us instead with exploring the remains of the Archivum and retrieving any and all scrolls even related to teleportation magic. Come on, but be careful of cobwebs. <sighs> you know, I love the smell of parchment. I'd almost say this room smells good if it weren't caked in nearly a thousand years of dust. <laughs> All right, let's see. Alchemical theory, runic technologies, tyromancy. Ugh. Ah, there we are. Experimental arcane studies. All right, this should be the section where scrolls and teleportation magic would be housed. And before we get searching, I know what you must be thinking. But Levi, I can't read Irune. And that's okay, you don't have to. The humans were all about organization. You saw how easily I read the names of the different sections of the Archivum, right? That's in part due to the designated symbols that represent each of them. Scrolls pertaining to the arcane each have their own symbols, which represent the type of magic they discuss, too. You and I will be looking for any scrolls marked with a spiral-looking seal, almost like a whirlpool. Any that you find, place in a pile over here. After we're done, we'll wrap them up in lambskin and sackcloth to be transported back to the lab. Plus, who knows? Although the chances are slim, maybe Irun looks a lot like your native language back in your world. Go ahead, have a look. Mm-hmm, just pick any one. No. Well... It was worth a shot. <laughs> All right, let's get started. We'll start from this end and work our way towards the other. Let me know if you find anything interesting. Hmm? You're relieved that you don't have to try and decipher all of this? <laughs> yeah, Irune can be pretty daunting at first. I studied for over two years to learn how to read it, and it took close to 50 years for archaeologists to decipher the language. What's interesting about Irun is that it predates even High Elvish, which was previously thought to be one of the very first languages to have both a spoken and a written form. And evidence suggests that it has served as the basis for at least one-fourth of all languages still spoken on Gaia today. My hope is that none of the scrolls we find today are encrypted, because that's definitely going to make our jobs quite a bit harder. Huh? Is something the matter? Ah, you're starting to wish that you could actually read Irune now, huh? <laughs> yeah, many of these scrolls are laden with sketches, and it only makes you want to know what they say even more. To be honest, I could just sit in this archivum and read through these scrolls all day and night. Each one contains such a wellspring of knowledge. Like this one, here, take a look at this. This one talks about the practical applications of ice magic, such as taking a small marble cube and engraving it with ice runes in order to keep drinks cool indefinitely all year round. Isn't that awesome? Huh? If these scrolls are so important, then why haven't they all been taken to the lab by now? Well, it's not like we wouldn't want to if we could. The problem is that the humans wrote almost exclusively on scrolls, as books wouldn't be invented until 400 years after their disappearance. The problem with scrolls is that the parchment is completely exposed to the elements at all times, whereas with books, the pages have a protective covering. Now, 
We found scroll tubes in and around some ancient human towns and settlements, which mean that when scrolls were being transported or carried around, they were protected within leather tubes with collapsible lids and straps for carrying them. But while indoors, they were often just left out in the open like this. Because of this, many of the scrolls we found are quite fragile, so most researchers don't even bother risking taking them outside, where the sudden change in temperature, exposure to sunlight or weather, or rough handling could destroy them. That is why today, we'll only be taking what we need. <sighs> On that note, I think we've just about picked this section clean, don't you? Let's see what we've got. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Huh. Oh, uh, it's nothing. I just... I thought there'd be more, given how big of a breakthrough the discovery and foundation of teleportation magic was. Oh, well. Six is still better than none, even if half of them appear to be encrypted. Yeah, encrypted. You know, uh, like, like when a text has been encoded, or written in a cipher, so as to keep the contents a secret. <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. We know that at the beginning of the Great Panic, the human emperor Halcyon ordered all official documents to be written in a cipher, quote, for the protection and security, or at least that's what we found anyway. But my question is, what was so important that Halcyon felt he needed to protect his people with such drastic measures? Right? But not many had the military or political power necessary to challenge the human empire at the time. I can't imagine what such a threat could have been that had them all so spooked. What are you saying? We know about the who and the what of the problem. But what about the why? <laughs> you sound just like Master Rusia. The why is what archaeologists and researchers like me have been scratching their heads over for hundreds of years. But <sighs> I doubt we'll find out more by hanging around in this dark, musty old room. What say we work our way back out and set up camp for the night, hmm? It's about half a day's walk back to the city of Alsea from here, so we'll rest up for the night and hit the trail early in the morning. Of course. I am an experienced explorer, after all. I already packed you a bedroll in your pack before I took off this morning, and I have everything we'll need for a tent and a fire spit in mine. What's the matter? Oh, come on. It's all right. There's no monsters. Not in this forest. Plus, you've got me to protect you. Levi Shorinel, esteemed researcher, explorer, and assistant of the illustrious Rusia Parvasi. Huh? Okay, maybe esteemed isn't quite the right word, but a level one spell like Fairy Lights isn't the only spell I can cast, you know. I know spells up to level five. That doesn't sound so bad, right? Mm-hmm. I won't let anything bad happen to you while I'm around. I promise. <laughs> Good. Now, let's head on out of these ruins. I think some dinner sounds amazing right about now, don't you? There should be just enough light to pitch the tent, and then after that, we'll get a fire started and set up the roasting spit to cook up the food we bought this morning. <laughs> I hope you like pork roast and sausages. <laughs> yes, yes. And I promise that we'll take things a lot slower when we hike our way back to the city tomorrow. Now, come on. I'm starving. <laughs>